Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a horror film, American Horror Stories, Episode 5, Bow. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The episode begins in the clinic where the couple, Liv and Matt, are consulting with the doctor about conceiving a baby. Unfortunately, the doctor says their chance with the IVF treatment decreases, as they have been trying multiple times already. The doctor suggests trying a different method, but Liv is persistent. She maintains that she wants to be pregnant, to feel a baby growing inside her no matter how much it can cost her. So the doctor allows them to try the IVF again, and then they leave. As Matt goes to get the car, the clinic receptionist, Bernadette, approaches Liv by complimenting her hormone-rich husband, Matt. Liv tells her that they will make an appointment again. Then, Bernadette sympathizes with her, as she has been trying to conceive for two years. So she offers her the fertility totem, and instructs her to put it under their bed during their sexy time for a successful pregnancy. Liv tries to reject her, but she convinces her to take it. Later that night, Liv puts the totem under their bed. Matt enters the room and sits on the bed with her. He tells her about his career and being inferior to her when it comes to financing, rather than hormones. They then proceed with their fleshly desires. Four months later, it shows Liv struggling to calm her fat baby boy. The babysitter helps her, and Liv expresses her frustration about her failure as a mother and freaks out. That night, in their bedroom, Liv passes by their baby monitor and is astonished by the static lines and eerie sounds. Then she remembered the totem under their bed and put it inside the box in their storage room. As she goes out of the room, her husband Matt startles her, wearing a scary mask. Matt explains that he is wearing the mask because he will go back to the set later, and that he came home to check in on her as the babysitter worries about her. Liv gets frustrated and tells him he should not leave them at night if he's really concerned. Matt defends himself by saying that he does not want to be seen as the guy who's rich in hormones but has to live off his wife's money. Liv seems to be having postpartum depression and opens up as she complains about her emotional condition as a first-time mom. Matt comforts her verbally without using his muscles by saying that whatever she is feeling is normal. Later on, he hands her a calling card, telling her to consider seeing the specialist recommended by his agent. Later while sleeping, Liv is disturbed by her baby's cry from the monitor. She's about to go back to sleep when she sees from the monitor a demonic creature standing in front of her baby. Liv hurries to her baby's room. She checks the cabinet, but there is no one. As she walks backward, she looks at the monitor she's holding. Shockingly, the demonic creature is standing right behind her. She quickly turns around, but the creature vanishes. The next day, Liv decides to see the specialist. She tells her about her frustrations as a first-time mom and that her baby seems to hate her. So the specialist reassures her and advises her on dealing with her baby. After that, Liv gives her baby a detox bath and puts him in the crib. Liv feels gratified and tells Matt how the specialist's advice works effectively. Matt feels proud about it, but he's rushing and tells her he will get some coffee before his audition. Before he goes, Liv gives him a cup of coffee she had made for him. Right then, the baby cries from the monitor, so Liv goes to his room. In the room, she sings a lullaby to calm the annoying baby, when suddenly she notices the totem in the crib. She's terrified of how it got there, since she put it in the storage room and the totem looks different. Liv hurries to check the box in the storage room and is surprised to see the box empty. She then confronts the babysitter, asking her if she puts it in the crib. The babysitter denies it and asks why she has it. While looking straight at the totem, the babysitter suddenly feels terrified and speaks in a different language. Frighteningly, she tells Liv she does not want to work there anymore while doing the sign of the cross, leaving her confused. Then, Liv hears an uncanny noise from the cellar. So she goes downstairs to check, only to see suspicious huge claw scratches on the wall. Suddenly, the fog comes out, and something falls from the ceiling that scratches her arm. After that, Liv and Matt talk about the incident. Matt tells her that he understands the babysitter's decision to leave, as the totem really looks satanic. He asks her where she got the totem, and Liv lies about getting it from a talisman. Matt dismisses her agitation about having a ghost in their house, and expresses his worry about her being strange lately. Matt then tells her how he thought she became better with the help of a specialist, and he's even worried because he will be gone to have shooting nights soon. Later that night, Liv searches online about the fertility god, and is frightened as she finds out that it links to a demonic creature called Belle. Suddenly, the baby cries on the monitor, showing a static and loud noise. She picks it up and hurries to her baby's room. Although the baby is crying a little, he's doing good, so she leaves the room. Liv rechecks the monitor and hears a fuzzy message from a voice in the high-pitched static. The next day, Liv talks about the incident with Matt. She plays the static and tries to prove that a voice is saying something. 
Mac dismisses it by pointing out that she has not been sleeping. Liv then plays the audio again and emphasizes the voice saying, I want him, and gets even more frustrated. But Matt says he doesn't know what he's hearing, so Liv plays it again and freaks out. Until the following day, Liv is sleeplessly listening to the audio. Matt approaches and brings the specialist with him. The specialist tries to listen to the audio, but she returns the headset instantly. The specialist explains what's going on with Liv, which is psychological. It makes Liv feel like she's delusional. But then, the specialist tells her that she's just sleep deprived, so she hands her a bottle of medicine. After that, Liv takes the pill. Later that night, the couple host a dinner party with Matt's friends. Meanwhile, one friend gets the Ouija board and invites them to play. Matt refuses, but Liv insists that it's okay. They start to play the spirit board led by Matt's friend, Emma. Then, the Ouija pointer starts to move, and they seriously follow. But it is just Matt who controls and makes fun of them, so they try again. Right then, one friend tells them that the Ouija pointer has moved. Liv leads the group and asks the spirit if it wants to say something. Liv is agitated as the Ouija pointer forms the phrase, he is mine. She freaks out and throws the Ouija board in fear. Matt tries to calm her down, but Liv connects the phrase to what she heard and saw from the baby's monitor and the scratches in the cellar. She's convinced that the demon in their house is after their baby. Matt follows Liv as she walks out. He is upset as she embarrassed him in front of his friends for seeing her act like crazy. Matt then tells her that he cannot tolerate her anymore. He asks her to fix herself by reminding her of the long process they have undertaken just to get her a successful pregnancy. Later, Lid is carrying their baby, crying because of the thunder. She calms him down when suddenly the demonic creature shows out of the window. Lid shouts with rage, telling the creature that it will never get her baby. The following day, as the receptionist, Bernadette, goes out of the clinic building, Liv comes out of nowhere. She confronts Bernadette while holding the totem. She tells her that the totem is Belle, and it wants her baby. So Liv asks her how to get rid of it. After that, Bernadette accompanies Liv to her place, filled with demonic literature and statues. She explains that Belle's totem is a fertility god, not a demon. While browsing some books, Bernadette explains how interested she is in all the church stuff and that magic saved her life. Bernadette finally finds the summary of the ritual from the book, which will help Liv and gives her the ritual dagger. That night, Liv sets up the place with candles and starts the ritual following Bernadette's book. She recites a spell, cuts her palm with the ritual dagger, and lets her blood flow to the totem. Then, she spatters the blood from the dagger into the candles while reciting the spell. Suddenly, she hears the whisper of the demonic creature from behind. Out of frustration, Liv quickly turns around and strikes behind her. Shockingly, she had stabbed her husband, Matt. Two weeks later, Matt visits Liv in the mental institution. Liv is apologetic about the incident and tells him that she can't stop seeing the knife. Matt comforts her verbally, saying that she doesn't need to be there, all locked up. But Liv feels guilty and afraid that she might harm their baby. So she decides to stay there, and Matt kisses her hand before leaving. Later, Matt walks to the parking lot, where a car is waiting for him. Apparently, Matt is having a hormone affair with Bernadette, and she has been waiting in the car. Bernadette compliments him for being such a great actor. He tells her that her role is also over. She can now eliminate the pagan props in her apartment. After that, Matt and his friends celebrate at Liv's house with his girlfriend Bernadette. As it turns out, the entire demonic plot was all a show, and they fabricated it so Matt could divorce Liv and get her money. And by that time, he'll be rich in both cash and hormones. Then, each of them recalls how they partake in the process. One friend was in charge of the hidden sound system, baby's monitor, and the wall scratches. The woman, Emma, was responsible for carving the three different totems and how she set up the fog in the basement. Simultaneously, Emma's boyfriend brags about his struggle with wearing the devil thorn. Then he talks about the other man's task of switching the pills to make Liv hallucinate, while the other man asks Matt about the prize. Matt tells them that the legal process takes months, but he reassures them of a comfortable life that awaits them once it's all done. They rejoice, and suddenly the baby cries. Matt is reminded of his responsibility and talks about how he struggled to maintain a low sperm count despite his being rich in hormones so as to prevent Liv from getting pregnant intentionally. Then, Matt goes to the baby's room. While Matt is in the room, his friends toast the success of their plan. Suddenly, a sound creaks, and the speaker starts to play. The other man says he surely took out the speaker system. But then, the lights turn off, and Bernadette notices the fog. Emma says it is impossible, because she took the machine back to the apartment. Bernadette is upset, and tells them to stop it since the show is over. 
but they are all flustered, telling each other that they are not doing anything. Then, they hear an eerie voice saying, you are mine. Suddenly, a growling noise intensifies, and they all run for their shitty lives. Emma's boyfriend runs first, and the demon strikes his head. Next, it cuts Emma's smelly stomach open from behind. Meanwhile, Matt hears someone scream as the demon pulls off the other man's organ. Matt goes out to check and sees Emma's body on the floor. Then, he hears Bernadette and sees the demon strangling and breaking her neck. After that, it shows Matt in prison for murdering his friends. Liv has been released from the mental institution and comes to visit Matt. She asks him why he did it. Matt confesses that he did not want kids and eventually stopped liking her, but admitted that he wanted her money. Liv asks if he killed his friends because of greed, but Matt denies and says it's only what the police think. He then tells her that Bal, the demon, was real, and it killed his friends to blame him. Liv is infuriated. She distrusts him and denies helping him get out of jail. For the last time, he tries to gaslight her as the father of their son to hire him an attorney, but Liv is determined. She walks out, and Matt pleads with her not to return to their house, as the demon is real. Later that night, the demon Bal shows up in Liv's room, asking her to release him. It turns out, Bernadette gave her the real summoning spell, and she performed the ritual again in the mental institution, which summoned the demon to her. It also reveals that Liv sent the demon to frame Matt by killing his friends. In the end, Liv agrees to release Belle in exchange for giving her another baby. The film ends as Liv and the demon start to get intimate on the bed. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.